Welcome back to Unique. I hope this past week has been filled with lots of discovery about how God and God's story that we find in the Bible connects with your life. When we left last week, Julia challenged you to think about what you saw in God's story. This week, we're going to take the exercise you did last week, looking at the highs, lows, and major themes of the Bible, and we're going to apply it to your life story. And if you haven't yet, be sure to do the Session 1 exercise in your primer so you'll know how to do this exercise for Session 2. Also, be sure to watch the teaching video for this session at lifeunique.com primer. This will introduce Session 2 and help you fill in the blanks on pages 17 and 24. If you're in a life group, talk about the table questions on page 18 of your primer, too. Once you've done all that, you can come back to this video. The big thought for session two is this. Most people have experienced their story, but few have interpreted their story. Even fewer can articulate their story in a way that helps them find their place in God's story. In this session, you're going to take the first steps to start interpreting your life story in light of God's story that you explored in the last session. The challenge for this session is to share your story in five chapter titles or less. Now that may sound like quite a challenge, but if you can do that for the story of the Bible, you can do that for your own life story too. You'll use the same three tools that you used last week. Hinge Moments, The Lifeline, and The Life Discovery grid. To start, turn to page 19 of your primer. Here you'll find the Hinge Moments tool. Now, just like last week, you'll take some time to write out the top 10 high points and the top 10 hard times of your life. Some Hinge Moments might be bittersweet, good but turned bad, or bad but turned good. Now, for these moments, put them in whichever category you think fits them best. We're going to prune these lists later so they don't have to be perfect right now. Pause the video now and take some time to write out the top 10 high points and the top 10 hard times in your life. Now that you've written out your top 10 high points and hard times, circle the top 10 most important hinge moments between your two lists. Your high points and your hard times don't have to be equal. For example, you could choose six high points and four hard times. You're just going to pare down this list of 20 down to 10. Pause the video and take a few minutes to circle your top 10 hinge moments. Now turn to page 20 of your primer for the second tool, the lifeline. The lifeline is a linear map of events from your life, Make taking those events in chronological order. Now, for a moment, turn back to page 19 and rate each of the 10 hinge moments that you circled. For the high points, rate them from plus 1 to plus 10, depending on how good they were. Moments like getting married, having kids, or giving your life to Jesus would be plus 9 or plus 10. For the hard times, rate them from minus 1 to minus 10, again depending on how hard they were. Moments like the death of a loved one would be a minus 9 or a minus 10. Pause the video and take a few minutes to rate the 10 hinge moments that you circled. Now turn back to page 20 and plot those 10 hinge moments in chronological order from the beginning of your life to right now. You'll see some examples on pages 21 and 22 of where to plot various points and how high or low to mark them. Uh, this will help you start to visualize the high and low points of your life and how they might group together or correspond to one another. You may start to see patterns emerging in your life that you've never seen before. Pause the video and complete your lifeline now. Now we're going to turn to the third tool, the Life Discovery Grid. This is an interpretive grid that helps you think through some of the most important aspects of each chapter of your life story. This tool is going to bring together the events from your lifeline with the major time periods and turning points of your life. The first thing you're going to do is to write out the age ranges for your chapters in the dark gray row at the top of the grid. Now, for example, my age ranges are from birth to age 19, 19 to 25, 25 to 27, 
27 to 30, and 30 to the present. Now look over your lifeline and determine the right age ranges to put on your own grid. Pause the video and complete this part now. Now you're going to start filling in the rows of the life discovery grid. In the heritage row, list two to five noteworthy features of how your family of origin and your extended family impacted your life during each chapter. In the high points row, list several high points that happened during each chapter. Now, you may include the events that didn't make your top 10 list. In the hard times row, list several hard times that happened during each chapter. Again, you may want to include events that didn't make your top 10 list. In the hand of God row, list times that God revealed himself to you in some extraordinary way during each chapter. In the heroes row, name any individuals whom you admired or who significantly impacted you in each chapter. Now, as you can see, this is going to take some time. Uh, you can use the examples on pages 24 and 25 to help you understand how to fill in each row. If you need more time to complete this part, feel free to watch the rest of this video and then fill in the grid this week before your group meets again. Once you've filled in your life discovery grid, it's time to name the chapters of your life. These chapters are the age ranges that you picked and wrote in the dark gray row at the top of the grid. Take a few minutes to brainstorm titles for each chapter and write the one you settle on at the top of each column. These chapter titles will encapsulate what was happening in each chapter of your life. Uh, for example, here are the titles of my life chapters. Uh, the first one was Foundation, then Preparation, Generation, Cooperation, and finally Multiplication. Now your chapter titles don't have to tie together the way mine do, but that's just the way my brain works. Your chapter titles could have a common theme, they could be multiple words, or they could be anything that helps you make sense of what was happening in each chapter of your life. Now, you can keep working on this throughout the week. When you've settled on your chapter titles, try to complete this exercise by coming up with a title for the entire story of your life. Now, I know this is a big undertaking to look at your whole story of your whole life and summarize it in a grid on just one piece of paper. But I think this exercise will be incredibly valuable for you, not only for this study, but for the rest of your life. It comes back to the final thought that I'll leave you with today. An uninterpreted past determines your future, but an interpreted past fuels your future. Maybe you've been living day to day and an uninterpreted past keeps determining your future. And it's not the future you want or the future God wants for you. And maybe you've never taken time to understand and interpret your life story. And the mistakes and patterns of your past keep coming back to haunt you. Today, you're going to take the first steps to interpret your life story and use it to fuel your journey toward the future God wants for you. Over the rest of this study, you'll start to hone in on the purpose and the calling God has for your life. But before you move forward, you have to start by looking back and understanding where you've come from if you're going to move ahead to a new destination. It's my prayer for you this week that God would speak to you and reveal how your past, the good, the bad, and the ugly, can be used by God to propel you into a life of purpose and meaning that God has created you for. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week for session three.